everybody and welcome to weekly strategic finance tips from the startup station. In this video, we're going to discuss three investor questions which can stump startup founders. So what they are based on all the uh, our experience and the list of investor questions that we've seen. Okay. So question number one is um, what percentage of the market share do you hope to get? And how quickly can you achieve it? Right, it's a very common question related to the market size. And um, why is it a difficult question, right? Because it really refers to your go-to-market strategy. And if you don't have it clearly formulated, it immediately becomes apparent to investors that you don't have a clear plan for capturing that market share. Whatever numbers you're showing them, whatever you're talking about is all just made up and it's a uh, fiction as opposed to a sound plan. So specifically, your go-to-market strategy should explain, right, how your marketing or sales activities will convert to revenues, right? Um, how much will it cost to achieve projected financial results, right? So what is the investment? Do you need more than one round of investment? How much investment do you need? How it will be spent, etc. If you're using your sales force, what is the sales cycle? How many people you need to hire? How many clients do they expect to convert per sales cycle? If it's a marketing strategy, which strategies you will use? What budget? What conversion rates do you expect, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And finally, uh, which factors are in your control and which are driven by the market? So what do I mean here? is, uh, you know, some things you decide, such as pricing, size of your marketing budget, how you will um, split it amongst different marketing strategies. However, some are not entirely in your control, right? For example, it's widely known that if you come to a website, only about 2% of all people will make a purchase. And it's very hard to beat that statistic because it's just based on so many examples and on uh, people's behavior, et cetera. And so things like this, which basically is the effectiveness of certain marketing strategies, that may be driven by the channel rather than whatever you're doing. And of course, you know, if you are um, effective, you may be able to get better results. Other things which may not be in your control are salaries of people you need to hire that is again driven by the market. Uh, or, you know, how long it may take to develop a certain product, especially if you're contracting somebody to do it like a development shop, it will really depend on them to give you a timeline of what is possible. Okay, question number two. Um, why haven't your competitors done it yet? Right? This is a very key question, right? If you're so brilliant and the idea is so good that it's just going to be the next, you know, amazing idea, why haven't somebody else done it already? Because obviously you're not the only one in the market. If you were, that means there's no demand for your product. So that would be a very, very bad thing. So um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what you should answer this question because it really depends on your situation. But I'm going to give you some options and hopefully they will spark your thought process in terms of which option or a combination of option or maybe another option is the best choice for you. So number one is your IP. You have a competitive advantage because you invented something that other people do not have access to. Like Google invented the search algorithm, right? Option two, it takes too long to do it for somebody else. And if that is the case for you, you may already have traction, right? So if what you developed took a long time or you use some know-how, maybe another product, and for somebody else to do it from scratch would just be too consuming, too time consuming, that is a good answer as well. Um, the target market could be too small or too hard to enter for somebody. You may have a competitive advantage there right, in terms of the cost of your product, the know-how, uh, access to uh, a certain market segment. Let's say you are um, in Africa and then you have to have access to a rapidly growing African market, right? So that is something that, you know, for a company that's not based on this market, doesn't know how things work, uh, it, will, it will not be an obstacle that is easy to overcome but for you it is right because you know the market you know your target customers you know the supply these channels the sales channels you know where to get uh people etc the laws and regulations i can go on about that 
Um, and there can also be a case where, you know, there are many industries that are very slow to innovate, right? And then sometimes you have these players that have been doing things the same way for many years and um, may not be open necessarily to technological progress, right? Because they're just too set in their ways. They're too focused on other things. And that can be a really good reason why um, there is an opportunity for someone young, new, full of fresh ideas to bring something uh, amazing to, uh, to that industry. And finally, the third question that I want to cover is that why should you get the money? What makes you so qualified, right? And here you want to articulate the following things, right? And then the way you do it, I'm going to go uh, over that in a second. So number one, you want to articulate that you have the right expertise, that you have the right experience and resilience, right? Because this uh, entrepreneurship road is arduous and full of ups and downs. You have a clear execution roadmap, right? And this is what the startup station can help you do. And you can execute, right? How do you show that you can execute? You've already achieved something. You've created an MVP. You've achieved some traction. You've got uh, testimonials from potential customers. Maybe you raised another round before. Whatever it is, something that uh, shows that it's not all just an idea because very few people can raise money on just an idea. And typically they would have successful prior ventures before, which would demonstrate that they can execute against the plan and react appropriately to market feedback. So how do you do it if you are a startup? You can obviously put a team together. Some of them may um, be there part-time initially and come full-time when there is funding. You may get advisors, which may join uh, full-time when there is funding, or you may create a, uh, an advisory board, which can give you access to all the expertise you need and help with hiring later uh, and enable you basically to close all the gaps uh, required to start a successful venture. And here you go. Uh, if you like this video, please share with your friends and colleagues on social media. Sign up for our YouTube channel for more strategic finance and financial modeling and other useful tips every day. Join us on Clubhouse every Thursday at 11 a.m. Search for Startup Station in order to join our community and sign up for our social media. If you want to learn more about our framework for modeling early stage startups, there is a free masterclass. The link is in the description on how to build credible financials for your venture. Thank you for listening and I will see you next week.